Hi, I'm going to tell you all about the grammar of Esperanto with the help of the fairy tale La Chalmisto de Hamelin. Be sure you had a look first at the fairy tale. I have a video about it. Huh? And if you were a beginner, weren't you amazed how much you already understood about the fairy tale? Huh? Well, now I explain why it's written like that. Huh? All the things in it. We begin with the letters. Esperanto is a phonetic language. This means 28 letters, 28 sounds. 28 sounds, 28 letters. Simple. The letters are A, Bo, Tso, Cho, Do, E, Fo, Go, Jo, Ho, Ho, I, Yo, Jo, Ko, Lo, Mo, No, O, Po, Ro, So, Sho, To, U, Wo, Vo, Zo. Uh, the most difficult ones are the red ones. I'll explain later. Eh? A, Tso, Cho, E, Go, Jo, Ho, I, Yo, Jo, Sho, U, Wo. In a word, Always the emphasis is on the last but one syllable. There are five vowels in Esperanto. A, E, I, O, U. A, E, I, O, U. I'll explain. Rato. Rat. Infanoi. Children. Urbestro. Mer. Cho, like in bats. Mu ne pagos alvi cent spesoin. I won't pay you a hundred spesos. Cent, cho. Cho, like in chat. Char en la domoi estas multai ratoi. Because in the houses there are a lot of rats. Char, cho. Go, like in God. La tutantagon la virinoi diras. Kiel malgaiai ni estas. Kiel estas tiom daratoi en chitiu urba hamelin. The whole day the women say. How unhappy, how sad we are. Why are there so many rats in this town, Hamelin? Tagon, go, malgayai. Jo, like in giant. Yen la rato, diras la verino. G estas la urbestro, linne. Estas honestulo. Here, the rat, says the woman. It is the mayor. He is not an honest one. G. Jo. G. Ho. Like in loch. There isn't a word in the story about it. Like in horror. Yo, like in yes. Yes, yes, diras la aliai virinoi. Kie estas la infanoi? Yes, yes, say the other women. Where are the children? Yes, yo, aliai virinoi infanoi yo. Jo, like in pleasure. In Esperanto. Journalo, jo. She, like in she. Shalmisto, sho. Wo. Wo is only after an A or an E. Au, like in how. O, o, 
and very, very careful. Ankaŭ mi estos honestulo, diras la ŝalmisto. Jen la infano. Also, I am an honest one, says the pipe player. Here, the children. Ankaŭ. Au. Au. Europa. Au. Now, the rest of the grammar. There is an accusative in Esperanto. This, for that, you end, you uh, put an N at the end. There is an accusative for the object and when you omit a preposition. There are no genders in Esperanto. You don't need them, so we don't have them. All nouns end with an O. Plural, you just added G. Yo. All adjectives, adjectives end with an A. All adverbs with an E. Now some examples. Mi, mi pelos la ratoin el la urbo. In a phrase, you normally have subject, verb, object. Mi pelos la ratoin. La ratoin or ratoin is the, is the object, so you have to, you have to uh, add an N at the end. Uh, I will drive the rats out of town. Uh, accusative. What's the use of that? Look at the picture. There is a dog chasing a cat, a cat chasing a mouse. Now the question is, what chases the cat? What chases the cat? Oh, a mouse chases... No, the cat chases a mouse. That's a good answer. What chases the cat? A dog chases the cat. One question and two possible answers. Yes, that's possible in English. But in Esperanto, we have a solution for that. Imagine. Mouse, muso. Cat, kato, hundo, uh, dog, hundo. Chases, in Esperanto, chasas. What is kio? And for the object, you end the name. So, think. How would you uh, translate the phrase what chases the cat in Esperanto? Or, kio? Chasas la caton, uh, or kion chasas la cato. First question, kio chasas la canton. The object is caton, that because it ends with an a n. Kio is the subject. So what are we asking about? The subject. So, the answer is dog. A dog. Kio chasas la caton. Hundo chasas la caton. The uh, question, kion chasas la cato, is muson chasas la cato. Um, um, also, in uh, Esperanto, the order in a phrase is um, free, eh? so you can change the order. Eh? In English, mostly, it's uh, subject, verb, object. You can uh, change this in Esperanto. And that's, that's because there are a lot of languages in uh, in the world, and not everybody uses this, the same uh, sequence, uh, so you can change it, and then an accusative is not useful, it's necessary to, to know what you are talking about, what is the subject, what is the object. Another reason for uh, an accusative is when you omit a preposition. Iun tagon shall misto visitas la urban. One day, the pipe player visits 
the town. Iun dagon. Uh, one day. You could also say en iu tago. Uh, at a certain day. Uh, but you don't say the at the or en. And instead of that, you can add an n. You have to add an n. Because in the phrase you see there, uh, shalmisto does not have an n. This means it's the subject. Urbom has an n. This is the object. And iuntagon is something else. But it has to have an n so that you are sure this is not the subject of the phrase. A bit complicated. It needs some time to, uh, to learn it. But um, yeah, that way we understand each other. All nouns end with an o. Ratto, urbestro, rat, mayor, uh, naso, oculo, busho, all things end with an O. Simple. Pearl, you add yo. Infanoi, children. Uh, uh, oculo, oculoi. Uh, uh, orelo, oreloi. Uh, uh, in English, you have child, children. Uh, uh, it's not regular. In Esperanto, no exceptions. It's all regular, simply adige. Yo. All adjectives end with an A. Char en la domoi estas multi ratoi. Because in the houses there are a lot of rats. Sed la urbestro estos mal gaia, but the mayor is sad. First, la domoi estas, ne, en la domoi estas multai ratoi. Multai uh, stands with ratoi, eh? a lot of rats. So it's an adjective and it has an a. And you see also, because uh, Ratoi is plural, also the adjective has to be plural. So both end with uh, ai, multi ratoi. The other example is la urbestro estas malgaya. Malgaya, sad, um, stands with mayor, eh? so it has to end with an a. All adverbs end with an e. La chalmisto promenas lo la voyo musicante per chalmo kai la ratoi linsegvas en la arbano en la arbaro. The pipe player walks down the road playing with his pipe and the rats uh, follow him into the forest. Musicante. Here it's an adverb, eh? so it has to. Uh, and with an E. Um, yes. Conjugations in um, Esperanto. In English, the conjugations are quite simple. In Esperanto, even more simple. Mi estas. Vi estas. Li, she, gi estas. Ni estas. Vi estas. Ili estas. Eh? I am, you are, he, she, it is, we are, you are, they are. Huh? In Esperanto, always for the present tense, you add uh, as. To remember present tense as, it's like an A in today. Hmm? But we, we also have me havas, I have. Mi amas, I love, eh? all verbs, no exceptions, present tense, at the end, as. For the past, it's is. You can remember it like in the Scottish spelling for yesterday. Nilin pelis el la urbo, 
diras la verinoi. We drove them out of town, say the uh, women. Uh, uh, pelis uh, drove. Future, always, os. O, like in tomorrow. Uh, la urbanoi de Hamelin estos tre malgana, malgaiai. The people of Hamelin will be very sad. Estos will be. Infinitives always end with an e. Uh, with e, yes. La virinoi ne povas fari tion, diras la virinoi. Ne po, uh, the women can't do that, say the children. Ne povas fari, can't do. Do or to do. Fari. Always e. All verbs. If you have a request or an order, you put u at the end. Pagu al mi cent spesoin, diras la shamista. Pay me hundred spesos, says, says the mayor. Uh, pagu, pay, uh, a request or an order. Uh, it's both in Esperanto. We can be polite and less polite. Conditional mood, there is no example, eh? but in the story, always us. Se ili ne pagus, ili ne rehavus la infano. If they wouldn't pay, they wouldn't uh, get the children back. Pagus eh? would pay. Present active possible. Ends with ant. An example? Musicante per shalmo. Uh, playing with a pipe. Hmm? Ant. That's what a present active possible. I'm going to uh, explain the whole thing. Yes? Ne dormo, Thomas. Uh, okay, yeah. <laughs> Bonne. Um, par participles. We'll uh, have this with an example. Sud, quion vi faras? Frap! Tia maniere mi captos fishoin. But, what are you doing? Knock! That way, we catch fish. We're going to look at what happens in the middle. Frap. Knock. Hmm. Uh, we can... Active means you look at it from the standpoint of Obelix. He is doing the action. Passive means the standpoint of the gladiator. He is... Uh, the victim of the action. And the first picture shows before, so the action is the future. And the last picture is the past. The action happens. Uh, in Esperanto, there is only one helping verb. Uh, only one. Esti. Oh, in the present time, estas. This means Uh, for the future, Obelix estas fraponta la gladiatora. Obelix is about to uh, knock the gladiator. In the present time, it's ant. Obelix is knocking the gladiator. Past, Obelix uh, knocked, was knocking the gladiator. Uh, so, you see already, it's the same as in uh, the conjugations. A, A for present, O for future, I for past. 
But Esperanto is like a blocking system. You can add things and so on. If you change the A at the end with an O, uh, la frapponto, la frapanto, la frapinto, then you make a person who is doing that thing. La frapponto is the one who is going to knock. La frapanto is the one who is knocking. La frapinto is the one who was knocking. Now we look at the standpoint of the gladiator. Passive. La gladiatoro estas frapota. La gladiator, glad, the gladiator, is uh, about to be uh, knocked. Quite difficult. Eh? Um, in Esperanto, eh? ot is passive and o for future. Gladiator, la gladiatoro estas frappata. Present, la gladia, gladiatoro estas frappita. He uh, was um, knocked, is uh, past. And again, you can uh, make uh, nouns of it. But now we are, uh, we looked at what happens now. Eh? But in fact, this was in the Roman time, uh, 2000 years ago. So instead of estas, people was uzi estis. Okay, in the future, estos. So there are a lot of possibilities in uh, Esperanto. Now we are going to look at correlatives or table words. What's that? They call it table words because you can put them in a table with five uh, columns, nine rows. I um, show them here in an uh, other way. Hmm? Uh, there, uh, the main thing is in the middle there is E. Hmm? And there are five possible beginnings and nine possible endings. For example, you take the first one, Kiyu. It's a question about a person. Kiyu means in Esperanto, who. Kiyo, you ask about a, a thing. What? Kia, what kind? Kies, whose? Kiel, you ask for the manner. How? Kie? Where? Kiam? Uh, when? Kiom? How many? Kial? Why? Uh, now we are going to see some examples um, in the picture. Kial. It begins with a K, so it's about a question. Al is for a reason. You ask for a reason, you say why. La infanoj diras al la virinoj, kial oni ne pelas la ratojn el la urbo? Why we don't drive the rats out of the city? Kiel, k question, l manner, so how? Kiel, malgaja estas la urbo, diras la chalmista. How sad is the town, says the pipe player. Kie, it ends with an E, it's about a place. Question about the place, where? Kie, estas la infanoj, vi estas culpa, vi ne estas honestulo. Where are the children? You are guilty, you are not an honest one. Kie, where? Tiu. To. That's for a pointer. You are a uh, and u a selection. That in English. En tiu momento la chalmista revenas el la arbaro. At that moment the piper uh, comes back from uh, the forest. Another example. 
tium. You point to something and about the amount. You say so many, much or so many. La tutantagum la virinoi dires. Kiel malgaiai ni estas. Kiel estas tium daratoi en chitiu urbo hamelin. The whole day the women say, why are we so, uh, uh, how unhappy we are. Why are there so many rats in uh, this town, Hamelin? EU, there is nothing in the beginning. Huh? This is indefinite. And U, selection, some. Huh? You don't know exactly huh? what, what it is. Iun tagon shall Mr. Visitas uh, la urban. Someday, the pipe player visits the town. Chiu. Cho for universal u selection. Each. Estas cent viroi en la urbo, kai? Chiu viro. Pagas unu speson. There are hundred uh, men in the town and each or every man pays one speso. Chiu, so means each. Nen, neniam. Nen is, you make it negative. Am is for time. Negative time means never. Sed en la urbestro logias en la arbaro kun la ratoi kai neniam, neniam, neniam revenas a la urbo hamelin. Eh? But the mayor uh, lives in the forest with the rats and never, never, never goes back to the town hamelin. So, you only have to learn 15 things and you know 45 things, three times that much. That's how Esperanto works. That's Esperanto. It's like a blocking system. Huh? Therefore, we have prefixes and suffixes. They change the meaning of the words huh? and they, they can be applied to a lot of words. In fact, if it has sense to every word. Huh? This means you learn a few words and you make a lot of words. That way you need a lot of uh, uh, less, you need less word roots in uh, Esperanto. Examples. Ist means a profession or a hobby. Schalmista, that is, Schalma is a pipe. Ist is a hobby or profession about a pipe, a pipe player. Hmm? Another example, mal. This is for the opposite. Huh? La virinoi estos tre, la viroi estos tre mal gaiai. Gaia is happy, mal gaia is sad. Huh? Um, bella, mal bella. Uh, granda, mal granda. Um, yes, um, so it, can you imagine for every opposite you only, normally you need to learn two words in Esperanto, only one. That's uh, a good, uh, a big advantage. Another example, Estr means a head of a, or a chief. Kai la urbestro diros mu na povas. And the mayor says, I can't. Urbo is town. Urbestro is the head of a town, a chief of a town. Mayor. Ul. That's eh, one characterized by the root. Ooh, what's that? Vine estos honestulo, diras la chamista. Honesta, that means... Um, uh, honest, 
Yeah, so easy, honest, honest. So then you make a person who has the uh, character of being honest, an honest one, honestulo. But you can intelligentulo, someone who is uh, intelligent, uh, and so on. Uh, bellulo is someone who is very uh, beautiful. Re, that means over again, back again. Uh, la chalmisto revenas a la urbo por visiti la urbestrum. The pipe player comes back from the town, uh, to the town to visit the mayor. Veni is going, reveni, going back. Ar is for a collective group. In tiu momento, la chalmisto revenas el la arbaro. At that moment, the pipe player comes back uh, out of the uh, forest. Arbo is a tree. A group of trees is a forest or wood. Arbaro means forest or wood. And you can, for everything that somewhere has a group of things, you can use this. No exceptions. An is for a member, follower, participant, inhabitant. La urbanoi de Hamelin estos tre malgayai. Urbo is town. An is for the inhabitant, inhabitant of a town. Uh, yeah, normally we say the people of town, uh, something like the citizens uh, of a town. Uh, conclusion, in Esperanto, there are only 16 grammar rules, no exceptions. You need a lot of less uh, word roots to learn, so Esperanto is relatively easy. Can't say easy, but relatively, a lot of easier than other languages. And it even helps you to learn other languages. If you need uh, to want to learn more about Esperanto, the first things uh, are programs uh, where you can learn Esperanto. Vortaroi.org uh, is uh, a dictionary. And uh, then you have where you can have more information about Esperanto. Thank you for listening.